Good morning and welcome to the 26th Army Science Conference. A special good morning and note of gratitude to the conference organizers for all of their hard work. I encourage all conference participants to listen, to imagine, to share ideas, and to challenge one another for the better. This important forum provides an extraordinary opportunity for the exchange of knowledge and ideas. Believe me, I wish I could be with you in Florida for these stimulating days of scientific exchange and collaboration, but the business of ending one administration and welcoming a new one dictates other pressing priorities right now. In approximately six weeks, there will be new leadership in most levels in the Pentagon, and as I and others depart, volumes of work remains to be done. Nonetheless, I'm so very happy that both the Under Secretary of the Army, the Honorable Nelson Ford, and the Vice Chief of Staff of the Army, General Peter Corelli, are scheduled to be with you in person and undoubtedly will add much presence to the conference. As I depart with the administration and as you deliberate over these next several days, let me leave you with three thoughts. First, our beloved Republic and our partners in Western civilization are the predominant scientific, military, political, and economic powers of all time because we have adopted and incorporated into our collective governance and ethos the notions of freedom, free will, free trade, free intellectual and scientific inquiry, free speech, freedom of religion, and freedom of the ballot box. Those inalienable rights have assured an open, honest, competitive, and entrepreneurial scientific environment that encourages and demands that we become the best of the best and that we are, are and always will be the standard to which others aspire. You can and will continue to be the best so long as we guard those sacred freedoms for ourselves and for others on this planet with our lives as we are doing today against all manner of aggressor, direct or indirect. Secondly, seven full years of war has tested our national endurance in the military and also in our scientific community, of which you are a vital part. You have been challenged and sometimes directed outright to help our nation's warfighters with new and innovative capabilities that help us to win this war and help us defend the homeland against all enemies, foreign and domestic, with the most modern weapons and military systems possible. You have responded magnificently and are to be congratulated and thanked profusely by our nation. But then again, you're Americans, whether born here or naturalized, and such excellence is expected of you, not only by our nation, but by freedom lovers everywhere in the world. Many have predicted a harsh and dangerous future world of conflict over political ideology, natural resources, and religion. If America is to prevail in that struggle, you, the scientific community, must lead the way. America's soldiers must never merely be in a fair fight. Our soldiers must always have the technological advantages to see first, kill first, and win always, regardless of the environment they're in or the number of enemy they face. You must assure that we are always and forever, in reality and in worldwide perception, a high technology army that cannot be defeated. That's your sacred duty as patriots and American scientists. Thirdly, we must always be mindful and put our younger generations first and foremost. The future is in their hands. We're especially proud of our young people who participate in the Army's educational outreach program, some of whom are attending and speaking at this conference. Through this program and other youth programs, the Army is encouraging and fostering the next generation of scientists and engineers. Our imperative is to make their world and the future of this great nation safer, more secure, and indomitable. Thank you again for all that you do. Have a great conference and a safe return home to enjoy the holiday season with your families. It has been my great privilege to be your host, even from afar. I leave you in good hands 
and hope that our paths can cross again in the future. Until then, have a great Army Day. And this Saturday in Philadelphia, go Army, beat Navy. Hooah! <laughs>